Hello there. I made some blooming farmhouse window boxes that I'm looking forward to sharing with you today. I really think you're going to like them. I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, and thank you for joining me today. So, I had these little boxes I got at Dollar Tree this past Halloween, and I had an idea. When I purchased them, I had no clue what I was going to do with them, but I've been looking at them recently, and I was like, you know what? I see a little window frame, so it's a good thing I bought four of them. And um, it says on the back here, Halloween DIY cut no, Halloween die cut DIY box. And I, when I bought it, I was like, oh, I planned on doing something maybe with a, a tea light or something because the back of here opens like this, like a little slide here. But in this instance, when I was looking at them, I was like, well, I bought four of them and I see a window frame. So it's like, let me, let me put these little guys together like this. And okay, this is what we're going to do. All right, now we're going to prep them. So I need to basically rip them apart and make them into picture picture frames or not picture window frames so at first i was trying to gingerly save the insides of them yeah that didn't work out <laughs> this first one i took a little bit longer than i wanted to i got some fresh blades out i was trying to get in you know to gingerly remove them in a nice way and what happened was what had happened was eventually this one came out but it kind of splintered a little bit and a couple of the other boxes did just to find a way to get them out and um you have to smooth it out a little bit with some sandpaper on the edges and then you got a little window box. So cut two, all four boxes are done. One of them chipped a little bit, but you'll see how we'll cover that in a little bit in, uh, a little later when we're done. And now we're just going to keep them in our, we're, we're, gonna, we're going to construct them first. So I'm going to use my tight bond premium wood glue that I get here at, at uh, the hardware store. So with that and a combination of, of hot glue, I'm going to put two and two together and then I'm going to put those two together with the same premise hot glue and wood glue and then we're going to get clamp happy because that's how i do it <laughs> if there's wood glue and yeah don't get too clamp happy because it's not exactly the strongest wood so as i'm putting the clamp on it i started to hear splintering is like oh please whitney don't break it so i let it sit for a couple hours while i did the second diy you'll see in this video while i was painting and now that i let that sit for a few hours we're going to go at this with some antique wax from waverly i love the way this looks on wood grain and i'm using a paper towel I wanted it to be a little bit darker, so I didn't use a baby wipe. I wanted it to absorb more of the wax. Now, the paper towel technique was a little bit daunting because I'm like, well, maybe I should have done this before I glued it together, but that wax really can cause different glues to not adhere. So it's best to, to if you're going to use the wax, it's best to just put, put the boxes together first. Now, there were some creases I couldn't get into, so you'll see here, boom, I moved over to a paintbrush. I got a paintbrush out, and then I used a paper towel to absorb up the extra wax that was kind of darker in some spots. So you're going to end up with a paper towel that's got a lot of wax kind of, you know, soaked up in it. Save that because we're going to use that on our second DIY. But as you can see here, there's no creases or crevices. Everything has been covered and every little nook and cranny has been good to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, Waverly, it's not Waverly, that's a folk art home decor chalk paint cottage white. I'm going to use this and I'm going to do some dry brushing. I'm doing larger strokes on the outside and I just want to get most of it covered, give it some more of that distressed farmhouse look that everyone loves, or at least how much I love it. And then on the front, I went kind of fast, but I wanted it to be more of a dusting because I wanted, uh, I just need, I need to have it. I always have a plan of attack when I'm trying to do distressing or when I'm trying to do um, different types of farmhouse techniques. And then what it ends up in is this beautiful mess right here. It ends up working out okay, but I can't necessarily say there's any one technique I go at. I, I have an idea, I start it. And then I kind of just say, well, let's see what happens because <laughs> it doesn't necessarily make sense to me either. I just hope that you guys at least like watching it for now. But after you get all that done, you have a cute little box here. So now I'm going to fill each one of these little window panes with some styrofoam. Now, for some reason here, I only did three, but you will see me grab another piece later and add it to the fourth. And I'm making like a raised little box here. So we're going to put styrofoam in each one of these boxes because we're going to put all kinds of beautiful crafting decorative florally goodness and happiness fun time inside each one now i have just enough i have the exact amount of spanish moss left in this color for this project i get this at hobby lobby and i like the colors that they have there and i also like the the quality and the condition also for the price that you get it's not bad at all use some spanish moss wherever your heart desires to purchase it from this is just where i got mine and i actually had the exact perfect amount so it was meant to be I used the, the, the last of the bag here and I'm just covering the pieces of styrofoam with the Spanish moss because we don't want it to show. We want it to look like it was not 
a piece of styrofoam. <laughs> you know, this, it's, it's state the obvious Tuesday or something. Sorry. That's exactly what it is. Just get a piece of styrofoam, but then cover it. We don't want it seen. We are going to put some stuff in here that the chances of seeing it are slim to none, but you never know. So it's always just good to have something kind of layered. So it'll hide your behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about any oopsies showing or anything like that. Once you get all these little boxes covered, I like to type out the excess. And then this is what we're working with. This is our cute little girl, our little box with all four pieces. You have a clean slate. You can add anything in here you want. I'm going with my own personal choice of greenery. I'm going to also add some of these eggs in you're going to see in a second. I wanted to go spring. I wanted to go greenery. And um, these are the things that make me happy. And I'm actually looking at it right here on my desk. So um, these right here are eggs I got at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. You can also get these little decorative eggs almost year round at like craftoutlet.com or even say Michael's or Hobby Lobby in like the section where you get the faux um, plastic um, vegetables and fruits or the birds and, and the birds nests. They, they, they have eggs there too, but these are leftover from Easter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my little eggs here. I, I grabbed three neutral colors in different sizes and I'm gonna turn them into picks so that we can use them. And we're gonna use the star from we placed in one of the window frames as basically our our little pedestal like or as as the the nest that the eggs would be sitting in so i turned each one of these into their own little pick with an extra piece of a stick of something i don't know where i got that from that was guaranteed off of some other project or some other floral stem and i saved it so um also these little greenery pieces it's the best to keep your extras off to the side because even then once you have them they you know the stuff that falls on the floor the stuff that doesn't make it into projects i put that in a junk bucket and from there even then you can see how even the tiniest piece you can cut that into two or three more pieces and i'm kind of nestling it in between the eggs here so it's, i think it's almost supposed to be like a faux baby's breath type thing here and i just like the little crisp white uh, styrofoam on there that makes it look like they're flowers so i'm just kind of cutting those apart and just kind of tucking them in where i think they see they see the best i think they make the best part of the little arrangement and then here i'm popping in that last little egg up front and then just adding a little piece of greenery here i cut a leaf off of something else it's just kind of a, a beautiful chaos when it, it starts happening like this like making these little tiny florally because uh, not corsage collages I, I like to call it a collage it just, this is like usually where my happiness is. I love making floral arrangements. I love putting these little groupings of, of pretty stuff. It's a grouping of pretty stuff and it makes me happy. <laughs> and then also I wasn't done. I thought I was done because you saw the camera cut out. But look, I found something else. And I'm like, this little green flowery plastic thing I found at the bottom of another bucket somewhere was look perfect right here down at the bottom between these bottom eggs. And now I am happy. Now my heart is happy. My eyes are happy. And I'm done with this particular little window frame on these four pieces. Okay, promise, won't touch it. Now, moving on to the other three girls. I wanted to go with greens. I have these berries that I got at Joann's an embarrassing amount of years ago. But again, if we all sat down and went through our stashes together, I don't think I'm alone with the amount of years some of my stuff has been with me. <laughs> please tell me I'm not alone. Do you do that? Do you have something in your stash that's like, wow, I can't believe it. Now see Hobby Lobby likes to remind you by putting the dates on the years of for what, like if this is Easter 2018, you're like, okay, that's not too bad. Easter 2014. All right. That's, that's Whitney. That's kind of like 2012. What have I been doing? And first off, where did I put it? And I forgot I had it, <laughs> but yeah, some of these things here. So these little berry picks I've had for, for quite some time, but I like the bright green. I like the, the lime the lime color to it. It's one of my favorite greens. And again, if you're new here and you're not familiar with me, I live in the desert. So um, my severe lack of greenery is probably what fuels my love of greenery. So if I'm making something for myself, for my home, for my own decorative purposes, my own themes, you're always going to see me go for green. I love greens. I love green leafy florally things. And this little box was 100% all selfish made for me, <laughs> me alone. And I'm looking at her right now while I'm recording this for you and she makes me happy. So it is what it is. If you have a color you prefer, if you have a theme or an item that you love, if your thing is, you know, you can also put like little bottles in here. You don't have to go all floral. Um, what was coming to me for spring was, you know, these eggs, eggs are very springtime for some reason, not just considered Easter, but these little white paper flowers, I'm just going to tuck them into the berries. Anything that makes me feel of like fresh, happy, vibrant colors that make you smile, whatever makes you smile, make your little window boxes, make you smile. And again, I'm just tucking things into the berries. I'm tucking more greenery leaves around the leaves of the berries. We're making collages out of it. Now, 
These other two boxes here, I'm gonna use this eucalyptus. Now I got this at Walmart after Christmas. So this is a Christmas item. And this is the best part to say, don't let Christmas labeling or packaging sway you from using it at other times of the year. I got it on clearance for 52 cents a bundle and I got large bundles. So I'm gonna use in the next two boxes, I'm gonna use that eucalyptus that I got. And then I'm also tucking in some bright yellowy little uh, fluffy styrofoam ball flower type deal things I get that I got at Hobby Lobby a few years ago now they have these at Hobby Lobby still they carry them yearly you um, basically seasonally I've seen them every year since I bought them so if if you're one of the people that need to have the exact same thing that you're seeing a DIY or use I can tell you you can at least get these or something like them at Hobby Lobby currently I did add a little bit of yellow in because I wanted just a tiny bit of color variance, but not too far away from a lot of the greenery because, you know, greens and yellows and whites, all very fresh spring happy colors make me happy. You're going to see a lot of the same <laughs> uh, themes here. Happy colors make me happy. Pretty florally stuff make me happy. Super terrific. Happy, happy. <laughs> So now for the, the top box, I kind of went a little bit more minimal because the other ones I kind of, I was worried I'm going to stuff them too much. So I took two pieces of eucalyptus. One of them I cut down to make it shorter. And then I'm just going to take two of these little white flowery um, deals off of a bundle that I got at Michael's some time ago. And I'm only cutting the flower off of the top and I'm just gluing that into the Spanish moss. So the styrofoam on this particular window frame is more of a pedestal or a shelf per se than it would be anything else. Now, Moving on, we want to cover up our little oopsie here. That's where the, wind, the wood splintered. The paint and the stain and the, the wax didn't cover it up to my liking. So I have these little wooden um, ladybugs and bumblebees that I bought last year. They are still available. They're linked in my Amazon shop. So if you want to take a look, there is a link to my Amazon store in my comments. I'm sorry, in my description and my pinned comment below. And you get a decent amount of both of them. And they're little wooden ones and they're painted very well. They're not very, you know, it doesn't scream made in China, even though it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're very cute. And I felt, you know, for springtime, even if you decide to pull out what's in your window boxes and switch it up for the seasons, I think I could get away with, with bumblebees in, no matter what I do. I don't plan on doing anything for like Christmas themed in here. But even if I wanted to go, you know, sunflowers or if I wanted to go 4th of July, bumblebees are going to be pretty much universal. And that's just what I did to cover up that oopsie, and I felt like it looks great. So now I've got four little boxes here filled with all kinds of happy green florally goodness. And this is exactly what I was going for, and I couldn't be happier. So this right here was just something to brighten up my own workspace while I'm editing videos, while I'm going through things and, and getting my pictures done and edited, and while I'm doing these voice recordings. I can actually look at some stuff while I'm watching and, and doing these things with you guys, and it makes me happy. So this right here was purely for me. But tell me what you think and tell me what you would do or if this is something you would even try yourself. Because, again, I had a different, complete different idea. But when I saw the, the window frame thing, I couldn't say no. So I wanted to make a second one, but on a larger scale to show if you're not able to get these smaller ones, these these four little picture frames here, they're very common to get at Dollar Tree. These these little wall art boxes you see all the time on their picture frame aisle. They've got lots. Obviously, you see I bought these at Christmas. And I can, with all transparency, I bought those two Christmases ago. I've had them for two years. And then we're going to use uh, paint sticks. Now, I'm only holding four here, but you will need six paint sticks for this particular project. But you can get paint sticks or smaller sticks from, from either Home Depot, Walmart, or you know Lowe's, wherever your hardware stores are. Now, a couple times these did come apart, but after you get all these boxes prepped, I want to take out the picture framing on the back. So I did have to pop open the side of each one and then I applied heat to it to get that little block off. I had to pop that side down because you need the proper leverage in order to get that off. It took a little bit of you know maneuvering to not actually rip it apart. It's just particle board and cardboard and then the paper covering on the outside. So you got to be a little bit careful not to literally obliterate it because it's... You don't have to have that much upper body strength to literally destroy some of the stuff from Dollar Tree, if you know what I mean. So I've got all four boxes prepped. I've got all the hangers removed from them. Now we're going to do the exact same premise that we did in our first DIY. So I'm going to take two and two, and then those two will turn into four. But because we're not using like a bigger solid wood, like the other thing, the, our other little box was raw wood, and I used wood glue. On this one, my hot glue, I use AdTech hot glue, and it has a lot of different... Uh, adhering um, capabilities. I have had no problem on the paper and cardboard and different things I've used it on with, with Dollar Tree. So this is a pretty solid piece. So now once you get all four together, I'm going to cover the back of them because you guys, if you've been here for a while, you'll know, once again, 
I like to finish things so that they look nice. I want them to almost look retail esque. I want them to look as though you purchased them off the shelf of a store. So I try to complete things as much as possible. I don't like to leave any behind the scenes showing. If I can cover up as much as possible, I do. So for this, I like to go for maybe a professionally framed look. So I'm putting the brown paper on the back. There's also some craft tape you could buy if you want to buy tape so it looks like an actual framed piece of art. But for here, I just use hot glue and making sure I got all my edges. Some of the hot glue dried a little bit and cooled off too much before I could get the piece down. But just make sure all your edges were hot glued in. And then I use a sanding block or some sort of sanding. This is a finger sander also in my Amazon shop. And I go down into a downward motion away from your piece and you get a very clean little edge. And then if you take a look here on the back, that is a perfectly framed piece. So now you, now you really think you have one piece and you don't see all the Christmas stuff. You can't see that it was actually made from something else. That's the stuff I like the best. Now we're gonna start painting. So you'll see here, I have all six paint, paint sticks I mentioned that we needed before. Again, these are plain paint sticks I get from Amazon. I bought them because they're all straight, they're all uniform, and they don't have any numbers on it. This here is my piece I'm going to use to make it out of a stand. I got this off of a pumpkin sign from Michael's a few years ago. It's just an extra piece in my stash. Now, don't worry, you can find pieces of wood from Dollar Tree that are just a standard rectangle piece of wood. You don't have to have it. This just happened to work out for me because I had that in my stash. But you can use even a thicker piece of cardboard if you had to. But you can just find something comparable that you could use because we're going to use that as the stand at the very end. We're going to glue our boxes to the top of that welcome sign. So now everything is going to get a coat of the home decor chalk paint in cottage white. So after mixing it up a lot, I literally just gave everything one coat and I let it go from there. Sorry. I gave it one coat at first. Now the welcome sign is going to be a little bit different for you because I don't know if anybody has the exact same thing that I had in my stash saved for years. If you need a couple coats, sure. I'm very bad at waiting for paint to dry. I have no patience, even with like a hair blow dryer or, you know, a heat gun. I will go at things a little bit too soon sometimes. Uh, but I think this took maybe two coats at the most. I'm only painting these paint sticks on the front side. There's no need to do the back since we're gluing them down. And then for the inside of this here, use your judgment because a lot of this won't show once we put our paint sticks on the outside and turn it into a window window frame so sometimes i might go a little bit too into the details like i literally covered in in nice even coats the whole sides edges tops and bottoms we're going to be putting styrofoam flowers and even more stuff in here that you probably won't see so use your judgment but just make sure you paint only the inside of your picture frames and then now we're ready to assemble so after our paint sticks are dry which Technically in this video right now, they're not dry. You'll see me wipe my hands off a few times because there's paint on them. I'm going to, to glue the first three down. The vertical pieces, I'm gonna glue those down as well, um, just because I'm gonna get most surface area. You'll see I'm covering most of the surface area. The whole paint stick touches those, those picture frames underneath it. And I'm doing that on all three of those. So the first three vertical panes or what we're creating the window panes out of are touching the actual picture frames below it. Now for the next three that are going horizontal across the top, those are only touching the original first three paint sticks. You'll see here, boom, boom, boom. I had three little um, dabs of glue and you're gonna do that on the top, middle and bottom. And there we have a perfect little box that looks just like a window and you can do whatever you want. You could put cards in here. You could put little bottles. This one is a little shallow, so there's not much room to put a lot of more larger things or get a little bit less. You have, you're kind of limited to what you can put in them. And for me, um, my preferences and my heart lies in, flo in flowers, you know, and, and, well, and pumpkins. But you guys know, you know I like pumpkins. So <laughs> if I could put, I would put so many pumpkins in there. I mean, the pumpkin ideas are coming in there. Yeah, you might see me redo this uh, redo this one for fall because now the pumpkin ideas are completely taking over, like saw something shiny. Anyway, so you see, here's our little box. <laughs> Got distracted by pumpkins again. Here's a little box and then there, we're not going to glue it down to, this, the, to, the, to the bottom piece yet because we wanna work on it. Now, remember earlier I said, save your paper towel because we're gonna use that from the antique wax we used on our first project. This paper towel is saturated with the extra wax that I used to kind of soak up some of the stuff from the wood of the first one. Now you can see pieces of that paper towel are falling apart because it would, I mean, it lived a good life. Let me just tell you that. It, it really did its job. It worked really hard. And I'm just distressing this in all the places I want. I like the mixture of the brown mixed in with the white and the black. I like the very farmhouse. I even considered adding a little bit of gray to this at one point. And I'm just kind of just 
seeing what feels right to me. I kind of rubbed a little bit on the inside of each window pane. And then of course I'm doing the bottom piece here because that is our, our stand we're gonna glue it to. Kind of wanted it to all be universal. And it also helps kind of just add that aged, add that farmhouse, add, add what I'm looking for. So here's our end piece. This is our box. You have a clean slate. You can do anything you want with this. I went a little to the pink side with flowers. You'll see in a second. It's almost like too pink, but I'm not sure if that's possible. <laughs> so the same as before, we are also going to take styrofoam and cut it to fit in each one of these little window boxes. Again, to make something either to place stems of floral picks into or to use as a shelf or, you know, um, almost like a like a, like a booster to whatever we use it, to whatever we're going to place in there or set anything on top of. So after you get your styrofoam locked in there, we're going to use Spanish moss. Now this is a brighter lime green Spanish moss that I have. And also because I ran out of the other one, this ended up working out just fine. So I have a lime green Spanish moss. We're going to fill each one of these little window boxes in to make all the cute little happy goodness. And um, yeah, it's a little bit messy, but it, it's very effective and it's so pretty when it's done. I, I could tell you, I, I'd say I don't like Spanish moss because of how messy it is, but I love the way it looks. And here you'll see, this is a collection of Dollar Tree, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, and probably a couple of things from Joann's. It's just florals from my stash that I'm going to just kind of rip apart in a beautiful mess and turn it into a different type of beautiful mess on the other side. <laughs> it turns into a really pretty pink bundle of, of cuteness. Like the black and white looks good with pink for me. I think of spring. I think of again, colors that make me happy. Again, you could go with whites, you could go with yellows, uh, even a, pr some pretty blues, purples, anything if you wanna go more Easter or if you wanna go more summer. You would even look really good with like a, a sunflower theme or a bee theme with white flowers. You could go with anything you choose here. I, I did just literally take every little pink bush I could find. I, again, I wanna keep my flowers a little small so it's not, you not look like I'm going overboard with it, but it wouldn't be me if I didn't go a little overboard, right? <laughs> Gotta go a little overboard with something. So in this instance, it's flowers. This right here is a little, another little stem, again, from Hobby Lobby. They have these, these cute, uh, picks with these little styrofoam balls in them and they come apart and you can group them together and turn them into your own pick. So it's like usually when you see a bundle, don't think that that's the way it has to be used. You can cut them apart. You can use floral tape or even just hot glue and turn them into their own little smaller bundles in different positions and different, you know, heights also with varying amounts. You can have two here and three here. I love doing that with these. And these also are a lighter pink where some of the other stuff is almost borderline neon, especially the way it's looking to me right here as I'm watching this back. Some of it's like really bright, Whitney. <laughs> like construction, not, well, I'd say construction orange, but you know, it's, it's like almost like neon pink. So I love the way it turned out though. It turned out really, really great. So a couple of these you'll see here. I didn't glue everything in, but some of the stuff I was having some problems with, yeah, it got glued in. And now I need more farmhouse. So I need more Buffalo check because farmhouse equals Buffalo check. So I'm just using, this is some fall ribbon I got at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. And I'm just making a fast little awareness shape and I'm pinching it in the middle and I'm cinching it together and then tying it with some uh, jute twine. And you'll see here, I have three little bows. I chose three because I thought it would be odd. An odd number, in my opinion, I didn't want it to be fully uniform. And I'm only going to glue my bows in on the styrofoam. Or it's basically to the Spanish moss on the styrofoam. I'm not gluing it to the frame or anything else like that. So I'm just tucking them in where I think they, they have a, a nice little set, a nice little place to nestle them in. And then of course, I'm gonna grab a little bundle right here from Michael's and I'm just cutting the, the floral pieces off the top and just tucking them into our little empty spaces. And I think it turned out great. This just added a little bit extra, filled in some of the little holes and it just made me happy. I think it turned out great. I just needed something extra and I want it again, the bows, I only chose three because I thought it would be weird. Sometimes I think the weirdest stuff or the oddest stuff is what makes it more, more beautiful in your eyes. And that's it for the flowers. Look how cute it is. Each one of these, uh, there's some more of those Joann's berries I used from the first one, but these ones were pink instead of the green. 
I just went through and found extra little pieces here. And even with the back covered with that brown paper, it looks professional to me. And I love how it turned out. And again, we can switch this up. If I choose to not really want to go with pink, I'll switch it up in a, in a month or two or, or maybe next year for next season. But also don't forget to glue it down. I almost forgot to put it on the piece here. So I'm just adding hot glue to the bottom and then kind of centering it on that piece of wood. And then now we have a little stand-up piece. So if you want to hang it on the wall, you could also add your ribbon to the back of it and maybe use some tape and hot glue. But I wanted this to be a stand-up piece. You could also maybe even nestle some flowers and or Spanish moss to the base of it there. So you have a um, like a little like layered effect, like some of it's spilling out of the window box onto the frame on the bottom. But I really like how it turned out. And so here's a larger rendition of our first one. And also maybe a, a more easily obtainable pieces you can get at Dollar Tree since I know they do have these pieces year round. This is something you should be able to find. You can also find different sizes so you don't have to do it on such a big scale. But let me know what you think and let me know if it's something you would try. I really love how it turned out. It makes me happy. The bright pinks, even though I might be leaning a little bit towards a little bit too pink, but I still love it. And I still would set this out and uh, take a look at her for many, many days. So that's it today, guys. These two boxes here made me super happy. I had a lot of fun making them. When it comes to these little tiny floral arrangements and I'm tucking little th little pieces here and there, something about putting them together is just the same happiness as on the larger arrangement sides. It's your time to have fun and your time to, to throw things together that make you happy. So let me know what you think. I had a lot of fun making them. So with all that said, I want to thank everybody very, very much. I have a, a coffee page that I uh, want to thank everyone who's donated to me in the past and who will in the future. If you learn anything from me or you just enjoy my videos, consider buying me a coffee. The link is in my description and my pinned comment to below and your generosity will go towards me uh, maintaining my channel. Helps me get supplies. And of course, never required, but always appreciated. So with that being said, I love you more than I can possibly say in words. Many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye for now.